good morning today we are going to uh, study the third part of rate equation i am dr ragu a working at government college autonomous mandya uh, this is the outline of today's talk basically we will be more concentrating on fourth level system and before that we are going to revise what happened to the earlier system which we have studied in the previous lectures the case of two level system the ratio of two populations is given by this equation 1 at best the upper level population can reach and not by 2 this implies basically that lazing is impossible in a two level system and then we have studied three level system this is the equation condition for population in inversion in terms of pumping radiation transition probability wp so initially n1 will be very very high uh, and at, at best we can in, in uh, send n not by two atoms to be the lazing upper lazing level to achieve population inversion this may this requires lot of pumping power and therefore the three level lazing system is not a energy efficient lazing system so keep these two information in your mind now let us study four level system this is the energy level diagram of a four level system with energy levels energy values e1 e2 e3 e4 with populations n1 n2 n3 n4 note that n3 is a e3 is a metastable state with the population n3 so if when pumping mechanism turned on with pumping transition probability wp then the radiation can make induce transition both upward as well as downward now those atoms which are at the upper level e4 can make a quick transition to e3 by a non radiative fast transition the lifetime of that is denoted as 243 that will be very very fast then those atoms which are at e3 will undergo de excitation to e2 the most of the time it will be with the emission of radiation and those atoms which are at e2 will make a fast transition to the ground state e1 so this is this are actually basic process of uh, in a four level system suppose those which are making the downward transition here shown here emits photons that photon can cause two process uh, one one of the process is actually again causing excitation from e2 to e3 or the other may be the photon can induce stimulated emission which results in the multiplication of photons basically that's the lazing process in the four level system so this is a picture of four level system now we already know that there are four energy levels e1 e2 e3 e4 with four populations n1 n2 n3 n4 so to understand clearly the behavior one has to write rate equations for all the four levels let's say uh, genuine method standard method or here we use one trick we consider only those important transition which contains most of the relevant and important information and in this case the rate equations of lazing states e2 and e3 are important and we learn as we continue that all this e2 e3 transition contains all the information about other kind of transition that is taking place in a four level system let r1 be the rate at which the atoms are pumped to level e4 from e1 then these atoms will make a quick creative transition to e3 this is the thing which you already explained the previous slide but what is important to understand here that the r1 now represent the rate at which the atoms are being populated at e3 so that r1 now becomes an important parameter 
pumping into level E2 to E1 is unavoidable in gas systems. Therefore, pump rate R2 of to E2 must be considered if we are dealing with gas system. So these two rates are not shown in the previous energy level diagram. That will be shown in the next diagram here. So note here that this WP is now called as R1, which is the pump rate that basically takes the atoms to energy level E4 and quickly they come, come to E3. Therefore, R1 itself is now actually called as pump rate to E3. And apart from that, uh, the, all those atoms which are at E3 can also undergo spontaneous decay to E2. Okay. Now, so that spontaneous decay is associated with spontaneous emission transition probability A32, which has a lifetime denoted by tau 32. And there is one more mechanism, R2, which is a pumping rate from ground level to E2. That's, that's more or less present in gas laser system. Now let us write the rate equations containing only 2, E2 and E3. So rate of change of population of E3 depends on many factors. We are going to list one by one. The pump rate R1 that populates E3 from E1 via E4. That's R1 is the important thing. Then stimulated transition to E2. So if there is similar transition from E3 to E2, that is given by this expression minus W32 times N3 minus N2. The sign conventions followed is standard. Those which increase population of the E3 are given positive sign and those decrease the population of E3 will take negative sign here. Then in addition to that there is spontaneous emission from E3 to E2. That's, that decreases the population of N3, therefore it carries negative sign minus and its value is minus A3 to N3. With all these rate equation of N3 can be written as dN3 by dT which is equal to R1 minus W32 times N3 minus N2 minus A3 to N3. Note down this equation 3 that we will use later. Then let us write rate equation of E2. It depends on the pumping rate R2 that populates E2 from E1. And stimulated emission from E3 to E2 will actually increase the population in, in E2. Therefore, that is given by W32 times N3 minus N2. Spontaneous emission from E3 also increases the population which is given by A3 to N3 and spontaneous emission from E2 to E1 which is a very fast process that actually decreases the population of N2 that is proportional to minus A21 N2. So with all these the rate of change of population of E2 is the rate equation of N2 that is given by dN2 by dt which is equal to R2 plus W32 in 3 minus N2 plus A32 in 3 minus A21 N2 is equation 4. So steady standard condition states that there is no change in population with respect to time. So mathematically it is written as dN3 by dt equals dN2 by dt that is equal to 0 under steady state conditions. So using these steady state conditions in either in the equation 3 or equation 4 we can get the further ahead the solution in understanding of four level system okay so corresponding three and four relations becomes r1 equals w32 times n3 minus n2 basically rating right equations under steady state condition and solving for r1 and r2 we get equation 5 and the next equation if you over these two equation note that this one and this one will get cancelled because they carry negative opposite signs. Similarly, these two will get cancelled. So the only left out term is A21 N2. So if you add equation 5 which is for R1 and equation for R2, you get A R1 plus R2 equals A21 N2. 
now naturally in gaseous system r1 is much 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 higher than r2 that means pumping rate to upper level is much higher than pumping level to next higher level to ground state r2 therefore we can write r1 plus r2 is nearly equal to r1 itself so if that is the case then instead of r1 plus r2 if you write r1 itself we can get the value of n2 which is which turns out to be uh, r1 divided by a21 it is represented equation says and this is an important relation keep that in your mind n2 equals r1 by a21 using 6 in 5 the equation 5 becomes that means uh, you are just substituting this value here and then that will become like that r1 equals w32 times n3 minus r1 by a21 plus a32 n3 so that can be simplified further to the population of n3 so then you get n3 to be equal to r1 times a21 plus w32 will do it by a21 times w32 plus a32 now we have the population of n2 also we have the population of n3 therefore we can take population difference between the two states so if you substitute equation 6 and we have equation 7 in this slide one can easily calculate n3 by minus n, n2 n2 is given by r1 divided by a21 r1 by a21 is common so take common outside and do algebraic simplification you get the population difference between the two states as equal to r1 times 1 minus a32 by a21 whole divided by w32 plus a21 Harkin, a32 so equation 8 represent population difference between the two levels e2 and e3 in a four level system now using that we can write the condition for lasing now all these spontaneous transition probabilities these are actually all inversely related to the lifetimes lifetimes of the upper levels which are causing the transitions so using that equation 8 can be written as n3 minus n2 equals r1 times 1 minus tau 2 1 by tau 3 2 whole divided by w3 2 plus 1 by tau 3 2 so equation 9 is an important relation now that that's the population difference between the two levels n3 n2 okay. so population inverse inversion happens if n3 minus n2 is more than 0 if that is the case then we say that population inversion exists and that can happen only if the numerator of equation 9 is more than 0 so that means uh, a 2 2 1 by 2 3 2 should be less than 1 if this is less than 1 then the numerator of equation 9 will be positive so that we can write in other words as tau 3 2 should be more than tau 2 1 which is a sufficient condition for lasing so tau 3 2 is actually lifetime of the level e3 and tau 2 1 is a lifetime of the level e2 so that is an important condition to have lasing in a four level system so if e3 is metastable state which we have earlier assumed if it is indeed a metastable state then this condition is easily met tau 3 2 greater than tau 2 1 okay so that's a sufficient condition for a four level system conclusion so lifetime of if e3 is more than e2 then it implies that e2 must depopulate at a faster rate than e2 e2 to than e3 so that implies finally creation of population difference between the two levels and detailed calculation shows that population inversion in a four level system occurs even for a very small pumping power we don't have to supply more amount huge amount of power to get a population inversion and emission of uh, lasing light 
So therefore, it is much easier to pump a four-level laser than the three-level laser, and because of this reason, four-level laser is a highly efficient laser. Helium neon laser is an example for a four-level system, which is a highly efficient and low cost because of the low power. It's a low cost laser also. So that ends the lecture. Thank you for your patient hearing. If you have any doubts, you can mail me back.